Hi, I'm Chris Lubkeman. I've been carving whittling for a long, long time. Uh, the main thing that I'm known for is uh, the rooster, and the rooster's featured in three of the books that Fox Chapel has published about my carving, and uh, a couple others besides that. But the trademark of my, my, of my carving with a pocket knife for many years has been a rooster. All different sizes and shapes and uh, styles of roosters. And what we're going to do is a rooster right now that's, that will go step by step how to take a Y-shaped branch like this and make a rooster. And uh, as far as raw material, it's almost always a Y. Uh, if you want to make a, a, a tall, thin rooster, you have a long branch here and a long branch here and uh, one here. If you want to make a short, stocky one, this is short, this is short, and this, of course, can be a little bit short, too. The best size to start with is some for a rooster like this. Uh, here's a little branch. This would be the head, the legs, the tail. Okay, that would be a good rooster to start with. You definitely don't want to start with something like this. Uh, people are tempted to get the big ones. They say, oh, the big ones are easier. No, they are not. You'll sweat bullets making these big guys, uh, especially if it's a hard wood. So uh, don't try something this big, uh, or maybe not something that small either. Uh, this, this will make a beautiful little rooster. Uh, but he's a bit of a challenge, and of course, if you get down to this size here, then that's a real challenge. Now, if I'm very careful, I can make three different roosters out of uh, this one little twig here. But uh, start out with something about that size. Make sure your knife is sharp, really, really sharp. Uh, not sort of sharp, really sharp. You'll be using the small blade. And now we'll get started on a rooster and we'll take one of these Y's and we're going to make a rooster. The uh, rooster is kind of the star, the mascot of this whole branch carving, branch whittling uh, concept. It's the first thing I ever saw done with the Y-shaped branch and I've been doing them for 50 years now. Uh, I have no idea how many of them I've carved. This is an average rooster egg. You've probably never seen a rooster egg before, but this is a rooster egg. Well, it's going to hatch into a rooster. This is going to be its his head, his legs, his tail. Okay, and there's a certain sequence I follow here to, to do this, and I'm going to be working fairly fast. This is step one, which is to cut the branch, and you, this branch here, the head branch, is about oh, a little bit shorter than this leg branch. This is going to be kind of a stocky rooster here. And you leave the tail branch long. That's not because the tail is going to be that long. It's just that we need that length to hold on to while we're doing it. Okay, so I'll take some off this side. Now I'm going to go to this side here. Now it's tough to cut like this because this branch is in the way. So I'm going to flip my knife over. I'm going to put the knife like that. I'm going to keep my thumb down here and cut like this. Remember the rule. The knife wants to hit air and not meat when it leaves the wood. So keep your thumb out of the way. Okay. This is the back side of the head branch. I think I counted the strokes on one of the roosters I made last year it was 250 some strokes. Uh, I have no, this one probably wouldn't, won't be that many. Okay, that is the, the head. Now, the opposite way will be the legs. This is a small road coming into a major highway. You cross over at the middle of the intersection and that's about where you start this cut. Now, on the head, I did the same from both sides had the same distance coming from the right and from the left. On this leg branch, I'm going to take a lot more from the front of the branch than from the back 
That way his chest is puffed out more. You'll see when I get to the middle, when I hit the pith. Okay, there's the pith, but I'm going to keep going. And this is a scoop cut. You cut, and of course, don't cut straight down, just kind of scoop. And with the end of your knife. Okay, now a little bit from the back. That way or this way, you can do it this way also. This branch is fairly dry. Uh, being birch, it's still doable. Uh, if it were a little bit fresher, it would be easier to carve, but it, it's not bad. Now we're going to take all the bark off and just leave the rooster in his bathing suit. Uh, you didn't know roosters went swimming in bathing suits, did you? Well, anyway, this, this kind does. And he likes to have a very nice bathing suit, so he's not embarrassed when he goes to the pond. Uh, so when you do this, take it off symmetrically, very nicely. The reason I mention that is a lot of people just hack the bark off, and the poor guy is embarrassed to death. He, he, he really looks ratty looking. So do a nice job when you take the bark off. Okay. And go around the bend here. This is definitely going to be a chunkier rooster than the average. Okay. Now let's take the bark off the tail branch. If you're working with fresh wood, when you debark the tail branch on the, your rooster fork, uh, just get another little branch about the size of the tail branch uh, from the same cutting and debark it. And then when that's dry enough to make nice curls, then you'll know that your rooster's uh, right too. So don't, don't experiment on your rooster, experiment on another, another practice branch. Okay, now that doesn't give us a whole lot to work with for the tail, but we're going to try to get at least six, maybe seven feathers out of that. Okay, I'm going to shorten his legs a little bit. They're a little bit too long for this rooster. All right, there he is in his vest, or his bathing suit. Now we're going to do his legs. And most people want to take the V out like this and like this, but you're going against the green and that, that doesn't work. So start down here at the point and go up. All right, we're getting it cleaned out a little bit here. Now this is why I like the little point on my knife so I can get into these little tight spaces here and make a turn. If the blade is very broad you can't do that. Okay, let's go down a little bit more. Then round his legs off a little bit. Uh, usually when I ask people if you were a rooster, if you were a rooster, would you like round legs or square legs? They say round legs. But I had one kid at one of the local high schools here in Lancaster County say one round and one square. So that was a pretty unusual answer. But uh, we'll, we'll make them both round here. Okay, what he has his legs. And now I'm going to thin the head branch down a little bit from the front. Make it a little bit of a curve. And then sharpen it. Bring it to a kind of a blade point. Now, right from the back point, slanted, straight, slanted, straight, slanted, straight. Now, there's going to be one more slanted cut here, but if I cut slanted, I'm going to put too much pressure on this uh, piece of wood here and it's going to split. So I'm going to go in from the front 
and then just pop it up. There, now I sharpened that little point. Okay, there's the top of the comb. Now we'll come in from the back. And now watch how this knife is going to work. I'm going to hold it like this. And so you know that I have no, no, I, I don't know control at all. But watch my left thumb make it work. See that? So what you want to do on this cut here, don't freehand it like that. Use your left thumb on your right thumb and push it. That way it's a controlled cut. You left-handers, of course, will be the opposite way. You'll be using your right thumb. Like I said before, all of you right-handers will really, really appreciate your left thumb after you take up this kind of carving. And you left-handers will just love your right thumb. Because they are very useful parts of your body for this type of carving. Okay, now there is the back of the comb. Now we're going to sharpen the beak. By the way, if you mess one of these guys up, don't ever throw it away. I, I don't think I've thrown away maybe in 50 years more than 15 roosters that I started to make. Uh, because you can always salvage them. If you mess up the comb, chop the comb off, make a shorter, fatter rooster. If you mess up the legs, uh, uh, shorten the legs, make a shorter, fatter rooster. The nice thing about this raw material, it's absolutely free. And... Uh, it, you can find it all over the place, and if you mess something up, you know, it's no, no big loss. Okay, there's the beak. Little cuts, little cuts. Now, same with the wattles. In, up. In, up. In, up. Don't get in a hurry. Uh, usually, uh, getting in a hurry uh, messes things up. Just take your time. And the first one you make might take you quite a while, and it might look like I got in a fight and lost. Uh, don't worry about it. I wish you could see the first one I made. It did look like I got in a fight and lost. But uh, uh, at least it didn't look like a pigeon or a duck. It looked like a rooster. Uh, but they, they do get better. And some of the folks that I've seen pick up this concept have just done fantastic work. Uh, one fellow down in Virginia told me about three years ago on the phone he's carved 5,000 roosters. And that's, that is a lot. Okay, now I'm doing a little split in the wattles here. All right, now there he is, except for the tail. Okay, now this is a very important tool, even though it doesn't look like it. This happens to be a piece of string. It's about the only thing we could find around here. But I'm putting around my left leg right behind my knee cap here. Now I can use a shoelace, a belt, a dog collar, anything. But it's just something to keep this rooster from slipping while I'm uh, doing his tail feather. Okay, so I'll start about here. And then my hands are right up against my body, so I'm very well braced. So I go forward, 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 all the way down. A little bit higher. Forward, 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 forward. All the way down. Short, repeated, forward slicing motions. Now this squeaky sound that you hear is typical of birch. I've worked with only two woods in the world, I just missed that one, uh, that do that birch and there's a wood over in Portugal that, that does the same thing.
And by the way, you develop really good grip in your hands from, if you do a lot of branch carving. Uh, if you ever want to have a handshaking contest with somebody, give yourself about a one month head start and do some branch carving. And then when you come to your competition, you'll win. There. Thin this last feather down a bit here. Okay, and then let's just spread them apart a little bit. They won't break. All of these uh, are going with the grain of the wood, so they're actually quite strong. There, and that's more or less what he should look like. So this is our finished rooster. Now this is the one I made on that step-by-step -step process that we just finished. Uh, I'll be real honest, it, it, that's a C minus tail. And I'm a little bit embarrassed uh, uh, to have him as my, as my sample. But anyway, uh, at least he doesn't look like a duck or a pigeon. Uh, so I made another one with a better tail just, to, just so I would feel better. So uh, if you want a, a, a rooster to look a little bit better than this, make one with a tail like this. These others here are just ones that are already painted and mounted on different, different bases. Uh, this one's what, head back crowing a little bit. This guy has his head turned sideways and he's, he's crowing big time. He has a very good tail. Uh, this is from a citrus branch from Sarasota, Florida. Uh, this guy has to be looking down. I don't know what he's looking at. Uh, this guy here m looks like he might be center on the rooster basketball team. Tall, thin guy. This one's pretty much average. And this little guy is the one that's made from a branch like this one right here. And give it a try. Don't give up on the little ones. They are lots of fun to do. So have fun making a rooster. Uh, mount it in an interesting way. And... Uh, Everyone will come out different. No two will ever come out alike. I've, been, I've done thousands of these things, and no two are identical. Have fun, and next time we'll work on something else. Mm -hmm.